In Christ alone, the gospel of Jesus Christ does not mix with anything. I want to start here in Matthew chapter 13, starting at verses 44 to 36, the parable of the treasure and the pearl. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure, hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man, seeking, a good, seeking goodly pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had, and bought it. Now this is talking about a man who finds a pearl that is of great treasure to him, of great price. And he goes and he sells everything he had, gives up everything he had to be able to obtain this pearl. I want to go to Mark chapter 2. Now before we get into this, I want to note that the Pharisees had their own way of doing things. They, they basically were a workspace. They believed that they could be self-righteous and work their way to heaven. And their self-righteousness, they had nothing to do with politicians. They had nothing to do with sinners. They were righteous, and they did not mix with anyone that was unrighteous. And even so much to say that they wouldn't even teach a sinner the law because they had nothing to do with sinners. Let's go down to verse 14 here. And he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the receipt of customs, and said unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. Now this is a tax collector. Jesus calling a tax collector to follow him in the public. The Pharisees were probably like, What the heck? And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at the meat in his house, many politicians and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many, and they followed him. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples, How is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? Now, this is a man, Jesus, they see him as a man who is claiming to be the Messiah. But yet, he's mixing with sinners and unrighteous people, and that's not the image of God that they have in their mind. That's not the image of the Messiah that they have in their mind. They're, they're picturing a perfect, righteous person that is completely against sinners and has nothing to do with them and would condemn them and just not walk with them, not eat with them, not have anything to do with them. But if we look at the per parable of the pearl, sell everything you had to obtain the pearl, right? So the ways of the Pharisees, their religious customs, to obtain the pearl that is salvation, we can't go with the, with the old ways. Christ the gospel of Jesus Christ doesn't mix with anything. And Jesus goes on and says, uh, When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And the disciples of John and of the Pharisees used to fast. And they come and say unto him, Why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast, but thy disciples fast not? You know, the Pharisees, like, everything Jesus is doing, like, this is not our ways. You, you're doing something different than we're doing. We, we're fasting. How, how come us and our disciples are fasting and you and your disciples are not? And Jesus said unto him, Can the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with, with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and they shall, and then shall they fast in those days. Now, Jesus is showing them, like, you're fasting, but you're, you're they, uh, hold on, I'm losing my train of thought. Jesus is saying, like, you guys are fasting, but my disciples are with the bridegroom. And the way that the, the, the priests in the old days, they made a rule that you can't fast in times of joy, in times of feast, like a wedding feast. You can't fast in times of joy. Fasting is for sorrow and for prayer and for mourning and repentance and when it's times of joy, you don't fast. When you're with the bridegroom, what, what reason is there to fast? Do you go to a wedding feast to not eat? And But there's a day when Jesus will be taken away from them. And in those days shall they mourn. And in those days shall they fast. And then he says, No man also soweth a piece of new cloth on an old garment. Now I want you to remember the parable of the pearl again. Sell everything you had to obtain the pearl. It means everything that was the Pharisees, everything they thought, they held on to, they clung to, they had to let go of in order to receive the pearl that Jesus had to offer. But they didn't want to do that. You know, they had the way of uh, religious customs. 
and ritual that was passed on from generation to generation to generation is something that's sown that deeply is not easily let go, let go of. To sell everything you have to obtain the pearl. Then he goes on to say, And no man putteth new wine into old bottles. So, Jesus is coming to offer new wine, and the Pharisees are holding on to their old bottles, wanting the Messiah to pour the new wine into the old bottles to keep their ways. But Jesus is offering something new. The Pharisees, you know, they want ritual. Jesus is offering relationship. They don't want that. The Pharisees, they think they can work their way into heaven. Jesus is offering grace. They don't want that. Jesus is telling them, you cannot put new wine into old bottles, else the new wine doth burst, the bottles and the wine is spilled, and the bottles will be marred, but the new wine must be put into new, mo new bottles. And then in 21, I'll read that again. No man also soweth a piece of new cloth on an old garment, else the new piece that filled it up taketh away from the old, and the rent is made worse. Guys, it's Christ alone. The gospel of Jesus Christ doesn't mix with anything. You can't work for your salvation. It's grace that saves you. By Christ alone, by grace, through faith. Your faith is accounted as righteousness. You don't have to work for it. When you have faith that Christ died, was buried, and resurrected on the third day according to the scriptures, that is a credit to you for righteousness. Jesus came to call the sinners to repentance. And I'm telling you now that the gospel of Jesus Christ does not mix with anything. You cannot mix the old with the new. If you try to put your new wine in old bottles and follow a messianic religion and follow the rituals and all that stuff, it's going to burst. It's going to break. All that stuff will not take you to heaven. It will lead you to hell. None of that's going to go to heaven. It'll go to hell with you if that's what you follow. It's Christ alone. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. It does not mix with anything. The ways of the old, get rid of it. Sell everything you have to buy this pearl. I love you guys. I'm going to leave you there. May the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you into all truth through the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord be with his children. God bless.